Hey everybody, welcome back to Reactions to the Good Witch. I am on, I forget which episode I'm on. I am on, uh, we're watching season five, episode 11. This one is called The Comet. This will be interesting. I imagine it's not going to get too conspiracy theory. It's just going to be more legend type of stuff um, because it's a family show. I can't see it getting too conspiracy theory on there. And what I mean by that is like um, Heaven's Gate believed that Haley's Comet had a uh, not a flying saucer, but basically a, a type of shuttle type of device um, to take their souls to um, to somewhere. I forget the, the exact story. It's been so long now. <laughs> um, but uh, it, uh, it was going to be or was a mass uh, suicide. I think it was going to be. Somehow it got intervened or something. Um, but they were going to do a mass suicide uh, to release their souls um, because their bodies were trapping them from being able to move on or something like that. I don't expect that in this show. <laughs> I imagine it's going to be more like uh, the Forever Tree type of uh, legend type of thing. Or the uh, the Ruby Heart, which, did that ever get, it got returned, didn't it? I think it did. So we'll see how things go. I think there's just this episode and the next episode, and then we're done. So they should be starting to wrap up the uh, legend about the two families, uh, Donovan's family and Abigail's family. Um, I know that the aunt is trying to keep them apart, so we'll see what happens with that. And I'm going to go ahead and finish both of those uh, today. I'm, I'll be posting them separately, but I'm going ahead and getting them done because I want to start into my next project, uh, which is going to take some time. So uh, that'll give me some time to work on that. Past that, I, I don't have any expectations from the shows. We'll see what memories pop up. Um, sometimes... I know I talked more in the first one than I thought I would because I just posted it. So I had to, uh, while I was editing, I was reliving everything I uh, was saying. So um, talked a lot more than I thought I would. Um, we'll see if I talk much with this one or not. We'll see what memories pop up and we'll just kind of go from there with everything. So join me for episode, or season five, episode 11, The Comet. Things you made for me when you were little. Mm. They didn't have cameras back then, so this is how they captured history. I prefer modern technology. Mm. This commemorates the night 200 years ago, best friends Victoria and Mary. It does make you wonder. Technology is growing exponentially. And so, you know, it's hard for kids. They're not kids. Uh, the, the youth young adults and um, younger to imagine not having cell phones and not having CDs, which CDs are obsolete now. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, what is a vinyl record and, you know, PC laptops. Um, my first PC laptop um, was a, uh, it had the CP unit, the, I forget what the CPU, U stands for unit. I forget what the central processing unit might be, what CPU stood for. But you had your CPU, you had the monitor. And then, of course, if you had any add-on type of things, like for uh, my stepfather's, um, was it Atari or Texas Instrument uh, gaming system, not the calculator. Uh, his Texas Instrument gaming system had a, you had to hook up your tape recorder to the computer because you would play tapes that would load the journey into the, the PC. Um, 
in, you know, you'd type in, you had to type in things pretty directly um, on what to do. Uh, so I remember hooking up the tape cassette to do that. I think I had to do, so it was a, it was a pirate adventure game that was on cassette that we had to load onto the Texas instrument. I'm pretty sure it was the Texas instrument and not the Atari. Um, but yes, we had an Atari too. Um, we used to, I used to play Pitfall all the time. Not very good at it. Um, I think we had Donkey Kong as well. The original Donkey Kong. I think we had Qbert. We had Hunt the Wumpus, which is kind of a similar to Minesweeper. If you're familiar with Minesweeper, I was good at Minesweeper. Hunt the Wumpus, not so much. But, um, you know, all these uh, these games that are now, the graphics uh, are just amazing. Um, but my, oh, and my first PC that I had, had the CPU, the monitor, the monitor was uh, monochrome orange. Uh, you had green or orange for your monochrome colors. Um, and it was for doing, I could get my email on there because I was in the pilot study at Penn State for emails for students. Um, and I might have talked about this already. My email address at Penn State was src6 at psu.edu. Um, but after the pilot program, all the students had at least three numbers. Um, and it was the staff that had single or double digit. Um, so I was one of the few students that had a single, single digit or double digit uh, number along with my initials. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I, and I, you know, I wish I still could own that email address, but I can't. So, um, but I remember the orange monochrome. You'd, the only games I played on it, I can't remember. The only game I remember playing on my PC um, was Larry Leisure Suit Larry. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, anybody that's played that game, um, you can imagine my mom was mad when she found out. My dad put that on our, <laughs> our computer. Um, because the whole objective of the game is finding the big O. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, she was livid when she found out dad put that on our computer. But dad bought the computer and put it all together for us. And it was for my sister and I to use for school. And then when I went to college, I took the computer with me. Um, but we used it for email and for Word document, spreadsheets, I think that's mainly it. Um, and then while I was in college, we got access to the internet. I didn't have access to it before college. Uh, so I started college in 92, graduated high school in 92. So um, the internet was just coming around. I'm talking a lot, aren't I? Um, when did the internet start. So the world, world Wide Web um, went live <laughs> August 6th, 1991. So that about fits right. Mom wouldn't have had um, the knowledge or the um, um, expense. I don't know how expensive it was at the time for us to have internet. Um, I do know that our internet was dial-up, um, which you can't really survive unless you're doing just Outlook, or not Outlook, but doing just email and word processing and Excel um, and just minimal research on the internet, then you could survive on dial-up. But I remember trying to, oh, this is another interesting story. I remember trying to um, teach my aunt how to get to her mail and, and that sort of thing and getting frustrated because 
she was having a hard time understanding all the different steps she had to take. Um, and she was doing dial up and it was so slow. But the interesting thing with that story is, is that my aunt is, she's my great aunt. Um, she's passed now, but, um, she worked on the first computer. So that's an interesting, and I always thought, you know, the, the first computer was huge. It, it filled a, it, my house is about 900 and some square feet, and it probably would have filled my house. Um, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but I don't think by much. <laughs> uh, but she worked on that first computer, but it was so different then to what we do with computers nowadays. And I think that's just kind of fascinating that even though she worked on the first computer, trying to work a modern computer was difficult for her. Um, I think she finally figured out how to at least do email so that she could keep in touch with her friends. But um, just technology has gone exponentially and it's just amazing um, the stuff that we can do with technology. And it's only going to keep growing exponentially. Um, so, okay, that's it for that. I'll quit talking now. We'll get back to the show. <sighs> Seems like everybody makes a macaroni necklace for uh, their parents, but I, I don't recall ever making a macaroni necklace. Brunch? Well... <laughs> That's what you want to call it. I call it two friends getting together to catch up. The 30-plus year rivalry between you and Dottie has no bearing on it. Obviously. I'll see you at home. Davis. <laughs> I can't say too much. I'm a grudge holder myself, so. Hmm. Kind of a blessing. Mm. Better than a curse. Oh, please, let's not talk about curses tonight. Hello, Martha. Tom. Is everyone as ready for this comet as I am? Astronomy is Tom's hobby. It'll be getting dark soon. We should probably get outside. Yes. Oh. I remember, um, I remember doing an evening activity, um, I don't think it was at the conservatory, but it was some type of auditorium and they had set up, I think it was a mock setup of the stars and, and all that kind of stuff and went through different things. I don't remember anything about being in the event, but I remember doing it, if that makes sense. Um, I've always, I've always liked astrology, but, um, astrology? Astronomy. Astronomy. Um, but um, I could never, I always have a hard time picking out uh, the Big Dipper and Little Dipper. I have a hard time picking those out. I can always find Orion uh, during the winter time, late fall, early spring. Um, I can usually find the Seven Sisters. The Seven Sisters and Cassiopeia the same? I think those are two different ones. But the Seven Sisters. And I used to be able to pick out the North Star, although the North Star is no longer the brightest in the sky, if I am remembering correctly. I'm not sure. I have my grandfather's astrology, uh, astronomy chart um, somewhere. Somewhere in my files downstairs. I'll see if I can find it and add on to this. Um, I was trying to think. My brother had a telescope for a while. And so we would look at the moon and, and that sort of thing. I remember we used his telescope to watch a total eclipse. We went to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And... Um, set up in the parking lot somewhere uh, one of the businesses I forget which one I don't think it was the mall I think it was one of the little shopping strips and we set up the telescope and he had uh, the white card 
that you put at the end of the telescope so that it uh, would cast the shadow of everything that was going on. And so that's how we watched the eclipse because we didn't have glasses. So there's some things in my life that circle around astronomy. And plus, I have some friends that really like uh, some of the ast astral, celestial events um, that happen, like the lining up of, um, what did we have recently? In the last year, we had Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter all aligned, I think. Uh, there was something about that. Uh, the most recent celestial event, I believe, was um, the smiley face, which was supposed to be Mars and Venus and then the moon. Um, the stars, uh, well, Mars and Venus were the planets uh, made up the eyes, and I believe the moon was a crescent moon, and so that was the smile <laughs> of the smiley face. I think is how it went. I think that was the most recent celestial event. Um, last year, was it last year or two years ago now? Gosh, I can't remember how long ago it was. I went with uh, one of my friends from my last job. Uh, we went to Columbia, South Carolina and watched the total solar eclipse there. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I might Paste a little clip of that right here. Oh. We're going totality. Going totality. We are now at a hundred percent totality. And trying to think, I guess that's it. I'm not heavy into it, but I do like it. Now, I like some astrology also. Uh, I don't necessarily believe in it, but some of the stuff is pretty right on for me. Um, but I like reading through the zodiac signs and the horoscopes and all that probably the stuff that jumps to my mind when we talk about the comet and that sort of thing. I have tried to watch the, is it the Astrid? Um, uh, the Astrid showers that happens every year. Or does it start with a P? Is it Perseus? There's some kind of... Um, meteor shower that we have every year that comes out of the north. Uh, well, it's in our northern horizon. Um, and the first year I learned about it, I went out on my back deck and tried to watch for them. And I think I only saw three meteors, um, shooting stars, in the amount of time I was out there. I think I was out there for two hours. Um, but the epicenter is past the horizon on my house. The north side of my house, it still continues up on a hill. Plus you have the trees. So it's hard to see that part of the sky for me. So um, that's all the stories I can think about uh, of lately. So I, I do like astronomy. I'm just not proficient in it. We'll say that. I do know that the color of the um, aura around the meteor and then the tail all depends on the um, the matter that it's made up of mostly. Um, so iron will give one color. I think iron is kind of a, the reddish um, color that we'll see. Um, you can see blue, white. And is there a yellow? Or is the yellow and the white kind of the same? But depending on the color of the 
ball around the meteor and the tail. Um, all depends on what it's made up of. My wish was for you to do what would make you happy. Hi. I did. Hi, Ryder. That was a quick visit from Ryder. That is unusual for him to get up on the chair with me because he won't come near me unless I'm in the bed. Although the last month, maybe less than a month, uh, he has been coming up to me um, while I'm sitting in the chair and let me scratch him. I'll reach down and scratch him um, and that sort of thing. And he'll peek up over the chair, the chair arm. But uh, that's the first time he's hopped up <laughs> while I'm sitting here. Um, and then gotten back down again. Uh, and so he's probably the last one you guys will get to meet. I'll probably have to introduce him while I'm in bed. Because um, he won't let me hold him either. Uh, but I've got lots of video footage of him just playing with him. And he loves to fetch. Um, and I won't get into too much of it because we're watching Good Witch. But I will introduce you to each of the cats. I know you guys have met Purdy already. Um, I'm, I've got some video of things that I'm going to put up. And then we'll go from there with things. But... Of course I'm not taking that job. makes me happy it's just being here with you ditto so he did choose to stay I figured he would I figured they wouldn't get them married and then tear them apart it's too family oriented for that so that was season 5 episode 11 the comet I have a feeling the curse isn't wrapped up um, because now that Dottie finds out that Donovan and Abigail are back together, there may be some fireworks over that. But I'm glad they're back together. They seem to be right for each other. Um, and he was fighting awfully hard for her, so that's good to see. I think I... I Reacted to everything I wanted to say, shared some memories, um, probably talked a little too much. You got to meet Ryder. <laughs> so I'm going to end it here, and I hope you guys join me. Let me check real quick. Okay, um, so I was checking to see if I was right about there being one more episode, and IMDb says there's only 10 episodes, but I've got 12. Um so I wonder where the other two are from. Um, so that threw me off a little bit. Oh, there's episode zero. Episode one. I bet you um, episode zero and episode one were um, uh, aired the same night. Well, no, they've Episode 0 is October 21st, and Episode 1 is June 9th. So I wonder if uh, the beginning of Tale of Two Hearts was a ending for one of the other series. I don't know. At any rate, we have one more episode left. <laughs> now that I've rambled some more, I... I don't know why I am so rambly and so emotional. I apologize. But at any rate, I will see you guys for the final episode. And hopefully I won't be too emotional with it. Bye, everybody.